you get the picture, right? Say so we're part of something bigger than us. So Reformation comes at a time of new order. New order is, is this. And Reformation means time, means set or proper time, convenient or due season. So Reformation occurs at the appointed time, set occasions, or at the end of an era and the start of another. Now, I could take you through biblical reformations. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob brings forth Joseph, Egypt. I can take you through it. I'm not, I don't want to take the time because where I need to go. So Isaac, who is a Gentile, right? He's a Gentile, brings forth reformation and bursts forth a Hebrew nation. He's not a Hebrew. He brings forth reformation. Moses and Joshua. Moses and Joshua, the mantle that was on Moses transfers over to Joshua. Joshua takes a people into the promised land, and the tribes take inheritance of what belongs to them. They bring forth the Reformation. David and Solomon bring forth the temple of God, the glory of God. I can take you all throughout the Bible. John the Baptist prepares the way. Jesus comes forth. They're all reformers. Josiah, every eight years, an interval of being something because he didn't choose to be a reformer. God chose him. So God's the one that chooses you to bring forth reformation. So reformation is this, to straighten thoroughly. It means to bring rectification, to make a structural adjustment. So when we start dealing with reformation, we, we, do, we deal with alignment. Somebody say alignment because I want to preach my New Year's message so bad right now it's not even funny. Because alignment means everything starts getting in line with the way that God has laid things out. It's an alignment it's an alignment. Look at somebody say, I'm getting in position. I'm getting in position. Because your purpose has a position in the body of Christ. So it has to do with the skeletal adjustment. When there's a disorder, there's confusion. There, there's faction. There's division. It says wherever that there is strife or faction, there is, there is in, there, when, where there's envy, there's confusion and every evil work. So confusion means disorder. Disorder opens up the door to evil work. The devil is a liar. It means to make straight that which has been misaligned, to put back into correct order of form. It points to skeletal adjustment. It is a correction of the inner mechanisms which gives shape or form to the outer image. In the church, it points to a complete overhaul of mentality, understanding, attitudes, and even perceptions. I better say it again. In the church, reformation points to a complete overhaul of mentality, understanding, attitudes, and even perceptions. So so if we think this is the way it was done before and this is the way it's going to be done again, then we have missed what God is doing because God is doing a new thing. God is releasing fresh oil. God is raising up. And I'm telling you, I'm setting you up. You know this is a setup, right? So that you can get it. Look at somebody say, I'm bigger than something. I'm, bit, I'm part of something bigger than what I thought. I'm part of something bigger. So, so reformation occurs when people make a conscious decision to change the predictable outcome of the future. You've got to make a decision that I'm not going to be a product of where I've been. Our church is not going to be a product of the norm. We're not a bunch of lemmings that are going to follow and go off the cliff. We've tasted the goodness of God. This city is ours. We're moving in apostolic reformation. We're not going to sit back and settle for anything less. We're about to aggressively move into the place of purpose and position that God has for us. We are not a personality driven church. There is one superstar. His name is Jesus Christ. We're going to stand in our place. We're moving up to a higher ground. Look at somebody say it's time for elevation. And all of this is going to trickle down in my family, in my finances, in my business, in my purpose, because what I'm hooked up to is going to flow down because as the head goes and the head is not just simply what's behind this pulpit. The head is much larger than what's behind this pulpit. As Jesus Christ goes, because he is the head of this ministry, he is the head of his church, so goes the body. And I'm telling you, God is moving his body into the greatest outpouring of his spirit that this world has ever seen. And you and I are a privileged people to be a part of it, to be born for such a time as this, to be raised up. Things are going to happen quickly. Businesses are going to be birthed quickly. Ministries are going to be birthed quickly. Things are going to come into alignment quickly because it's the set time of the order of God. So reformation occurs when people make a conscious decision. You have to decide, I'm not looking back. I've got the gift of goodbye. I'm not going to sit here and cry. I'm not going to feel sorry for myself. I'm not going to be a 
scatter. I'm not going to be a divider. I'm not going to sit here and say, well, why is this and question this? God is a theocracy. He's not a democracy. This is not a board. This is not a vote. This is not a political event. This is called the church. And the church is run by Jesus Christ. He has set order. He has methodologies and ways that he does things. Like it or not, your decision is either get in, get out, or get run over. But one or the other, you're going to be a part of something that is great. And this house is going to experience a great outpouring of the glory of God. I feel it in my spirit. I feel it in my bones. I feel it in every part of me. Your family's about to be adjusted. Come on, things that aren't in alignment with God. I'm telling you, God's about to move. They're not going to be able to stay. People are going to be leaving your life. Don't get upset about wrong people exiting your life. Devils are going to manifest themselves, and they do it through people. You're going to have some battles because the devil doesn't go to sleep because I'm not going to let you stay in the same place that you've stayed in for the last 10 years. It's time for reformation. It's time that things get adjusted and come into alignment with the plan and the will of God. God spoke a long time ago. This is not just a local ministry. This is a global ministry, guys. This is a ministry that we are called to shake nations. We're called to see the glory of God. Now, I know you care about your babies. Your babies are going to be taken care of. I know you care about your headache. Your headache's going to be taken care of. I know you care about your checkbook. Your checkbook's going to be taken care of. But I want to get you out of you for just a minute and get you to care about what God cares about. And his picture is bigger than our individual little wish list. His picture is that he is moving in a mighty way, doing something significant, doing something great. He's elevating you to a higher position. He's going to put a demand on you. He has delivered the big. He is demanding the big. And he is about to thrust you into a large place. He's expanded your territories. He's broadening your vision. He's broadening your territory. He's enlarging you and increasing you. So all those prayers you've been praying, Ms. B, you better get ready because you're going to do more than just stand up here and sing. Come on, every one of you get, better get ready because you're going to, Greg, I call him Pastor Greg all the time. He gets frustrated with me calling him Pastor Greg because he don't want me to call him that. But I call him that all the time and he just gets a little grin on his face because I say that because I call those things that you can't see in the natural right now as though they were. So even though things look one way, God has everything set for an order. I'm telling you, it's time for reformation. God's about to shift some things up in the earth. He's shifting some things up. And so you've got to be in purpose, in position and say, I'm in Pastor Paula. You've been preaching it for two and a half years. We came back. We restored the altar. We removed the idols. We called sin, sin and righteousness, righteousness. We called black, black and white, white. We called gray, gray. We brought forth the word of God. We weren't going to deal with the devil. We didn't play with him. We kicked out Tobiah. We kicked out Sam Ballot. We said we're not going to have a terrorist spirit in here. We didn't come to have a club. We didn't come to look cute. That's for somebody else. But that wasn't my assignment. We came for a mighty move of God. I'm 45 years old. I'm tired. I get older. I don't have the energy that I had when I was 20. I can't play around with the Chuck. We've got to do this thing. We've got to move in this thing. We've got to bring forth this thing. I can't, I can't waste more time. I can't waste energy. I can't waste money. I can't waste resources. I can't waste cute little prayers. We're going for what God has for us. Somebody say amen. So watch for that to happen. And I'm almost through. I'm keeping you a little bit longer tonight. That means you've got to break the patterns of the traditional present. I'm going to say it real loud because that's the most important statement I just said. For that to happen, Dr. Payne, and this is the hardest thing, you've got to break the patterns of traditional present. You've got to break patterns of traditional present. So reformation comes through people who have a mind to reform, to say, God, I'm ready. Now, if you're one of those analytical people that have got to figure everything out beforehand, you're going to be frustrated. I'm just telling you in advance because God does not always give the full blueprint. Hey, Mary, the Holy Ghost is going to overshadow you. She says, how can this be? I'm a virgin. Well, the Holy Spirit's going to overshadow you. You shall conceive and bring forth Emmanuel. His name shall be called Jesus. He shall save his people from their sins. She says, okay, be it unto me according to thy will. 
According to thy word, be it unto me. Now, God never tells her, oh, by the way, Mary, at two years old, Herod's going to come after you and try to kill your baby. Now, when he's 12 years old, he's going to go missing because he already knows his purpose in the earth. Now, he's going to get defiant with you when you're going to have to push him into his first miracle. Now, people are going to try to push him off the cliff, and they're ultimately going to crucify him. You're going to be standing at the cross weeping because you're going to have to watch your baby boy die up there. But he's going to die for the joy of the Lord that was set before him. So I don't tell you all the details of destiny, Mary. All I tell you is the Holy Spirit is about to overshadow you, and you're going to bring something holy called Jesus. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That God doesn't tell you all the details? Because if he told you all the details, you would run. You would never sign up. You would have said no. You would have risked your eternity if you knew all the details. So God just gives you the, I'm coming after you. You're like, okay, cool. I get pregnant by the Holy Spirit. But you don't show me the next 33 and a half years of hell. Yes. Somebody say amen. So personal transformation takes place in you. You cannot successfully participate in global reformation without having personal transformation. How does that happen? You study it out. But Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, brethren. Let me tell you what that means. When he's talking to you, he goes, hey! That's what he's saying. That didn't even get y'all's attention. He's screaming. That's what beseech means in the, in the Greek and Hebrew. It means pay attention. Listen, he's saying, I, I'm talking to you on something so important that you can't afford to miss this point. I beseech you, brethren. Therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, which means your rational worship. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed, which means to alter into another state, to bring forth a complete change, appearance of nature. means you're going to look like God, talk like God, act like God, walk like God, think like God, create like God. Be transformed by the renewing, which means renovation of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of the Lord. So when you reform, it means to amend or improve by change of form or removal of faults, abuses or errors, to fix that which is defective, corrupt, or depraved. So you have to have personal transformation in order to have foundational reformation. I did all that to get you here. Psalm 11, chapter, chapter 11, verse 3, it says, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Foundation is the basis or the purpose. So the adjustment must first occur in the foundation. If a foundation is not right, then the righteous, what can they do? So what's the foundation? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 through 22. Therefore remember that formerly you who were Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, that done in the body by the hands of men, Remember that at the time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenant of promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of two, thus making peace. And in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens, here's where I want to take you, with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. I'm going to stop right there. And in him, you are too being built together by, built together to become a dwelling in which God lives in his spirit. So watch this very careful. You're no longer foreigners, right? We're citizens of God. So as citizens and members of God's household, they're built on what kind of foundation? The household of God is built on the foundation of apostles and prophets. That's what it tells us, correct? Guys, got your Bible? Check 